this channel also covers some ghost stuff, and I've heard Massachusetts is one of the more haunted states. Could you share with us your your story of your interaction with the haunted house? I actually discuss some of that on my YouTube channel and my blog. I call it Growing Up Haunted. I think I might turn it into a book series. I'm really excited about it. Oh, man. And you're right. Now, Massachusetts is one of the most haunted um, states in the U.S., but New England as a whole is actually the most haunted region in the continental U.S. And I believe um, New Orleans is actually, like, the most haunted city. I think from what I understand in like research and stuff like that. So it's kind of really cool. But um, I grew up in a house that was a Gambrell style, which is very similar to the Amityville Horror House, if anybody is wondering. Uh, my house was built in 1912. Um, I moved into it in the early to mid 90s. <laughs> so my grandmother died in our house when I was roughly uh, five years old. I remember the whole experience like it was yesterday, it was crazy. Um, and I think my grandmother was either like the third or fourth or something like that person to actually die in that house since 1912. Um, and like all these crazy things would always happen in our house. And one of my favorite stories is kind of a three part story series that happened over like a, a year and a half time frame. So it was like this evolving story that because I was living it, I didn't realize it was an evolving story. It was kind of just my daily like terror basically growing up. Um, Every year, my sister would get one of those giant balloons. I don't know if anybody remembers these. And if you hit them, they played music and they made a little bit of noise for like 20 seconds. They would sing like happy birthday or celebrate, whatever. <laughs> and every year, our cats would destroy the balloons, play with the strings, pop the balloons, whatever. And this is important just based off of how the story goes is the way the house was built, um, when you walk through the front door, you immediately have a staircase of 14 stairs that kind of go do, 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 and then you come to the second floor landing. It's 14 stairs. I know because later on the story will find out why. Um, and then you continue through the, the last four feet of the hallway. You're facing the closet. To your right is our dining room. To the left is the living room. So one year, for whatever reason, um, my mother, my cousin, and myself were sitting at home in the living room. And the cats, it's been months. It's early spring. The cats have not destroyed that balloon. She gets it every year in January and within two weeks it's destroyed. So we're in early spring. It's still around, it's still kicking, it's still playing music, whatever. It's chilling in the dining room where it always ends up. Well, we're watching one of my favorite ghost shows called A Haunting, <laughs> ironically enough. And we're talking, we're watching the show and then all of a sudden, um, my back is to the wall where the hallway is, but my cousin and my mom can see it. And I just see their face just drop. And I'm like, what, what's going on? And I look and I see something move out of the corner of my eye. And lo and behold, I watched and this balloon is like this. Just, just coming right into our living room, not bobbing like a balloon that has helium would do nothing. It's like as if somebody was holding it perfectly still walking with it. And it just, and it makes a perfect U-turn, stops, just chills there for a second as if to be like, yay, hey, I'm here, what's up? And then continues back out in that U-turn fashion and goes back into the dining room. And we are just in stunned silence. Like, what is that? You know, I, nobody opened a door to create a curve. AC on, didn't need it, nothing. nothing to help. It was where my pet died to a three foot hallway into the living room, U turn, exit through the three foot hallway, and back into the same corner in our dining room. What? Wow. So then we fast forward several months later. I'm told if I don't clean my room, I'll be grounded for two weeks. That was like the typical grounding. Um, so I'm home alone. I'm upstairs on the second floor cleaning my room. This room, for whatever reason, had a lot of activity. Even my sister will tell people, like, that room was really weird. It had this big walk-in closet on the opposite end of the room, and four babies over the course of that, that house being built were born in that room, um, which is very kind of cool and interesting. But so I'm home alone. I'm cleaning. It's uh, right before my birthday, so it's June now. We passed January. We passed spring. We're in June. And I'm home alone, and I open up my closet door, and boom! hit me so hard in the face with that darn balloon. 
so hard in the face that I stumbled backwards, hit near my bed, run around my bed, terrified, run all the way down and like pretty much just fell down all 14 stairs, counted them on my way down, went out the front door and like waited for my family to get home. It was so crazy. And um, oh my goodness, Hannibal. We had um, old fashioned stairs have, you know, the, the, the ballast poles and the banisters. Well, one of the caps on the banister used to come off. And for years I would stick notes down. So I thought it was cool that one day if anybody remodeled, they would find all my notes and toys and things when I was a kid, like a time capsule. So my sister and I decided that we would make a time capsule outside too. So we bury it, we're really, really cool. And um, I put a note in the banister telling, you know, whoever, hey, we made a time capsule. If you want to dig it up someday, here's where you find it next to blah, 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 tree, whatever. And my sister doesn't really know that I do that yet, right? And I, it was so weird. My sister goes and tells me, hey, ghost friend knows about your letters in the stairs. I'm like, what the heck is that? Who's ghost friend? What what are they talking about? And why are you talking to a ghost? Like, it was so crazy. And apparently she had this ghost friend who lived in the cellar who used to talk to her all the time. It uh, was a man. And uh, so that is like a little child, like in and of itself, like poltergeist. And I was like, wow, that's really weird. And it scared me when she told me that. So then I ran to the um, closet pie wall paper we never read it and it almost like remnant of like the harry potter closet <laughs> in the closet and uh, i go in there and i sit down like freaked out like like who tells somebody that they have a like, good ghost friend like whatever i'm sitting down and as i turn on the light I, I saw something on the floor and it was a letter and what's really weird about this letter guys is that there was no way that letter could have been there um, and the reason why I know that is because I had written it several years earlier, announcing that I had a baby sister. I wrote in the stairs after my little sister was born. My sister's about seven and a half years younger than me. Wow. Um, and I was really excited about it. I wrote a frame with a child and it scared the crap out of me. So like some to go deep down several years into the banister of stuff that I had put in there, dropped in there, so to speak. Like you couldn't reach down that far. It was really deep. So like stuff like that would happen all the time. Lights would flicker, things would go missing. Um, in the other bedroom upstairs, like if you turn to a certain station, it would automatically turn back to country music. Uh, like weird things would happen in the cellar. Like that house was weird, but I like the balloon story because it's like three stories in one. But that stuff happened all the time. It was so scary. It was crazy. <laughs> Did you ever try and use a Ouija board or anything to, to talk to it? Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. That I grew up with a, um, a mom that was pagan. So we were very much introduced to a healthy respect for the non-living, let's just say. And my mom always told us never to mess around with that kind of stuff because you don't know what you're inviting around. You don't know how to control it. And it's basically like opening the door to your entire neighborhood neighborhood and expecting nothing to happen like eventually somebody's going to come around and notice your door and walk, and walk right in and make themselves at home good or bad so that was um the healthy respect for the things that go on the night that I grew up with never did anything like that I was tempted to maybe leave like a recorder and record when I wasn't around but I, I didn't want to know the answers man I, I I didn't I was fine when I left at 22 and I was I'm, I'm good with it it's somebody else's problem now, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's known as the neighborhood haunted house. So, I mean, it's not a secret. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.